Um, we're talking about Wimbledon. Obviously, you played there as well. You started your playing career there. What was it like coming up through the youth ranks at Wimbledon in the early 80s when they were effectively the crazy gang? Like, what was that like as yeah. a young lad training with those boys? That's fantastic. I mean, I mean, the, the story begins when when I was when I was last year of school. I was because it was in London. You could do you could do all the London clubs. And I was at Chelsea. I've been at Chelsea for four years, and then and, and then uh, I got an offer to go to Wimbledon. And I could have been I could have been a scholar or apprentice at Chelsea. Chelsea were in the the, the old first division, what is now the Premier League. And yeah. because I enjoyed it so much at Wimbledon, I walked out on Chelsea to sign for Wimbledon. Now I'm now in League Two, the old Division Four. And thinking about it, you think, you know, if, if you if you don't make the grade at Chelsea, you've got you know a little bit of cushion that you can keep going down the leagues, and there's a little bit of cushion you can still probably make a make a play. But if you don't make it at Wimbledon in Division Four, League Two as it is now, you're you know you're, you're sunk about trace or non-league. So you when know, I went, I, I chose to go there purely because because of the you know the the, 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 the how the club was, how the club felt, you know, the players who I've known really well and. And more importantly, I was a I was a scholar, first year scholar at sixteen. You was training with the first team. Now you know wow. you other clubs you don't get that. So there were six of us trained every day with the first team. So you was fast tracked and a massive fun. It was a massive learning curve. You know he was getting he was cannon fodder. He was getting beaten up. He was getting kicked. He was getting thrown in rivers. You know there was all sorts thrown in stinging. That was all sorts went off. But it was it was absolutely phenomenal. And luckily you know touch wood it worked out for me. And I made my debut a year later uh, as a second year scholar and a second year apprentice. And then, you know, we, we progressed, we went right through the leagues. It was it was phenomenal. I like that um, that confidence that you have. Like, I'm just going down to the uh, to the bottom, as it were, and really test yourself and not give yourself a safety net. Is well, it true? Like... Sorry. Go on, go on, say it again. Listen. I was going to say, is it true that you did that throughout your career where you'd only have like one year contracts so that you would yeah. purposely perform to your top level? So you had to, so yeah. the boss was kind of forced to give you another contract, yes or no? Yeah, no, hundred percent. I mean, that, that that one, that one. Looking back, I, I wish you know. You looking back in hindsight, you think, I wonder what would happen. What if if I'd have stayed there? You know, that was a that was yeah, a, yeah, yeah. But, but I wouldn't swap my career for anything. You know, but but what I, I had belief in my ability. I was a confident boy, and and I, I always felt that you know that that you never, whenever you come through as a young boy, especially at Wimbledon, you never get you never you know they were bringing in players elsewhere on like loads more money, loads more money. Now I'm not driven by yeah. money, but thinking I'm not getting fairly rewarded, so. I was ambitious to play in the, in, in the Division One. Always had, so I would sign a one year. They give me a two or three. Said, "No, I only sign a year." Why? I said, "Because Nick, if I have a good season, score a few goals, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be on my way." So I did that. I did that for quite a few. But every time of my contract ran out, we got promoted. Contract ran out, we got. We had about four promotions in five years. There's a relegation yeah. in right at the start, but you know, I, I didn't expect. I, I, I was always hopeful I'd, I'd be in the top division, playing the top flight. Uh, but I didn't expect it with Wimbledon, especially at that time. But to, to do it with the lads and to do it how we did it, uh, um, even even when I did get to the first division, when I still only signed a year, I only wanted a year. I'll have another year again in, when we when we got there. So I was always looking, I was always thinking, leaving my options open, as it were. That's um, again, what a fantastic story of just the way Wimbledon. Ro- I mean, there's a lot of fans there that remember just you rocketed up the leagues, like. That just doesn't happen now. When you, I'm thinking of like Leeds, for an example, went down, and just they've been down for a long, long time. And we were saying off air, like it's really hard to rocket, certainly from the Championship to the Premier League. Yeah. Like, it, what are your well, memories of that? No, it's a lot. It's a lot easier then, probably a lot more difficult then. I mean, you can say it's not just you looking at the Championship with, with Leeds trying to get out of it. Uh, you can look at the bottom of that Championship where Barnsley and Luton came up last year from League One. Yeah. And and they look like coming straight back down. So the golfs, the golfs are getting bigger. But what we had was we had, you know, we we went, we we won, we we went up, promoted the first year, went up, came back down, went up again, up again, got into the old second division. We had one year in the second division, and we went into the Premier League. So you know, in four years' time, and in that September, we was top of the league. So we had a great, a great belief, um, a great system. I mean, people say we were a long ball, but. You know, you don't you don't get in that top division by you know we had more than that. You know, we had we had some good players, uh, and we knew what we was doing, and we and and, and we we didn't we, we weren't scared, we weren't frightened. You can go to places and you see that this is Anfield or the Theatre of Dreams, and sometimes you get intimidated. Well, we we we, we weren't intimidated. In fact, it, we would we wouldn't give anybody respect unless they earn it. So we would go and play these yeah. players. You've seen them on telly, you've seen them on Match of the Day, you've seen them on International, you've seen them playing for England. 
And until you walks off, then you just go shake your hand and go, no, you, you know, you're, you know, now you've got our respect. At that time, we didn't, no one, no one got our respect. They had to earn it, and that was the, that was, you know, that was the mentor, and that was the way we were. Did that work both ways as well? When you're playing with like your Alan Hansons, your Kenny Dalglishes, did you yeah. get that? Did they respect you at the end of a game as well? Well, uh, funny you say them too, because we we played them in we played them in '87, played them at Anfield, uh, and our first our first ever visit to Anfield. And we beat them two one. Alan Court scored in the cop, and that actually, I think that might have handed the, the title over to Everton. I'm not quite sure, but <laughs> the Alves played. They all played, and the cop actually clapped us off. The cop with the reception the cop gave us after that. So it was a two way thing. Yeah, I think I think you know they they I think they I think I think the performance you know just deserved that respect, and you know we'd arrived on the big platform, we'd arrived on the big scene, so you know it gave us great confidence, and you know and, and, and you know it it was it was magnificent. I think everyone liked Wimbledon as well. Obviously, if you talk about eighty seven, the year after, um, they went to win the FA Cup as well, which yeah. I don't believe you were a part of that team, but I think they kind of captured the heart of the nation. Was that right? I mean, forgive me, was that right? I was a seven year old lad at the time, so yeah, like... no, one hundred percent right. When I left in eighty seven. So uh, we, we actually got to the quarterfinals that year. We played Spurs and we had, I'm not saying we had a better team, but we had as good a team. And, and, and I'm yeah. thinking, wow, you know, we, we, you know, because we, we, we was doing well. One that day we could beat anybody in the FA Cup. You know, that's, that's a, a great recipe. You know, you can get where you, you, know, you need to go. So we got beat in the quarterfinals, disappointingly so. And then when Wimbledon, when Wimbledon got to the, the Cup final, it was no surprise. In fact, I went, me and Mark Morris, who had, who had both left the club at that time, Got on the tube, went in with the fans, and went in and sat Amazing. with the fans. And that, and that, you know, and, and it was, it was, it was great. It was great. And again, that didn't surprise us. Surprised everybody else, but it didn't, you know, it didn't surprise me. You know, the the, what, the, the attitude and. And I think Vinny's tackle on McMahon in the first minute went it helped as well. If you remember, that. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth having a look back. Well, we've actually, as it happens, we um. Late last year, we did an event with Vinny Jones. He was telling us all about. He still has a lot of love for that time and a lot of love for Wimbledon to the point where his um his FA Cup winning medal is in the um, the AFC Wimbledon yes. Museum, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I still, it's still no, all affiliated. I think, I think anyone who's anyone who's been part of Wimbledon, anyone who's been come down, you, you, is a is a certain is a certain feel to it, a family feel. Once yeah. you met, even the lone players, the lone players. We had Aaron Ramsdale last year, and he, you know, he 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 bought right into it, and everybody who comes down, it touches you and. And it's such a great feeling and a great club, and and, and they appreciate they appreciate what we you know we we you not know, got illusions of grandeur. We know what we are. We work men like we 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 get over hurdles we shouldn't get over, and we keep surprising people. So my question is then: the eighty eight Cup final, you're there with the fans, you're watching your your former teammates win the FA Cup, and one of the biggest upsets in football history. Um, what was the celebration like, and how long did it last? Because oh. I was in Leicester when they won the league, and that lasted for about a week. So, yeah. like, tell me Wimbledon parted harder than Leicester. Yeah, no, they were. I, I, I listen, I think that time, that time of year when we was playing, that time in our in our lives, and there was a, there was a drinking culture anyway. So, I think that would have gone on for ages and ages. There was a game on the Monday night. Uh, we played. They won the cup on the Saturday. Alan Cork had his testimonial on the Monday night. So they, they he was playing on Monday night, and they were, they were still drunk there. So he was all drinking. <laughs> so you know, it was. Uh, it was a massive drink culture there, and to be fair, you know that's something you have to celebrate. And then in any any yeah, cup, Leicester, you 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 got to celebrate. You know? 